Hello everyone, this is Benham from Banks and Markets. In this video today, I would like to talk about net present value, the method of investment appraisal. Particularly, I want to focus on why NPV is the best. Okay, there, there, there are research, and these research, they say that IRR or average rate of return um, some other methods are more popular than net present value, but they are only in terms of popularity, okay? The best method, the most useful here among these investment appraisal techniques is no other but net present value. Of course, discount cash flow technique itself has loads of limitation, net present value also has so many disadvantages. For example, the rate that you need, the discount factor, hurdle rate, or whatever you want to call it, cost of capital, that rate itself is a problem because we don't know what rate is the best. And in the discounted cash flow method, the numbers are all estimated. Uh, so therefore, the computation of NPV also relies on those estimated numbers. So that then basically means everything is a flaw, <laughs> but we need to appreciate the fact that uh, it gives us some idea as to the direction of the investment. And secondly, we can apply some kind of sensitivity or scenario analysis to see how resistance that uh, NPV is. But uh, the main, main idea of this video is uh, illustrate uh, how to compute NPV quickly and easily and then uh, talk about why this is superior. So without losing more time, here I create a, a numerical example. And as you can see, I'm saying there is a project which has a lifespan of four years. And this project is going to cost at the beginning, let's say 100 million, and will generate cash flows of 80 millions in year one and two. Year three and four, it will give nothing, but uh, the project uh, will only end, let's say, in year four. So what are they? They are cash flows, and I said they are in million. Okay, so that's uh, the project. Now, should we take this project or not? Um, accept or reject is the question. So let's say now that 10% is that hurdle rate discount factor. In that case, we can quickly find out the present value for, uh, let's say, a pound for at 10% at for these different uh, time periods. So which is going to 1 divided by 1 plus discounted by this rate, which is 10%, I'm just going to lock uh, the row so that later on I can easily copy. Uh, and here I will lock the column A. So th therefore this is one, the second will be 0 0.909, the, the third will be 0 0.8 and 0 0.7, and, and you know all this from present value tables. Now here, I will find our present value of these cash flows, which is going to be uh, this times uh, the present value um, discount factor. So we, we are going to get this cash flows. Now, um, if you just think in terms of profit or loss, okay, and ignore the time value of money, then you are going to say this project is going to give you 80 and 80, 160 minus 100, 60, 60 million. Okay, so that may sound good and one may quickly make a decision that, okay, let's go ahead with this project. Whereas if you go and take the net present value approach, which is the summation of all the present values, both the inflows and outflows, then you will get this number here. Okay, this is still positive and 38.84. So now you can say that uh, this project should be accepted. We can go ahead with this project. But now let us assume that uh, you have a scenario 
similar in terms of cash flows, but the timing of the cash flows are something like this. Um, it is zero here, zero there, okay? And then um, 80 here and 80 there. You see the profit and loss uh, at the end is still 60. But can you see here what has happened to the net present value? It has gone down. Um, substantially. Let's change this to 20% and see what happens. If we change this to 20%, you can see that here we're saying take, accept this project for the same numbers here, but here we're saying reject. You see, it's just the timing of the cash flows which has made this huge difference. And this is something we are able to find out when we apply the method net present value. Now, let us have one more scenario, uh, or we can say this is a third project, okay? And let's assume that we can only take one out of the three projects, which basically means it's a situation, something like mutually exclusive project. You can only take one out of those that are available. And uh, in that case, I can also give some name. Let's say that this is project A's, um, and this is project B, and this is project C. In case of project C, uh, what I will do, I will change these numbers, uh, but here I will say the investment amount is less, let's say only 50 million. And the cash inflow, first year was 50, and then second year is 60. So ultimately we have 60, 60, and 60, uh, which means all the time we are having the same profit loss situation, same, same amount. But if we see the net present value, it is very different from one another and telling us what project we must not take. Now, if the question is, we can only take one out of the three, then of course we can, we should only be taking project C, except uh, if it is the case of uh, being able to take only one project. So this is definitely reject. Um, this is reject. Um, but um, if only one, okay, if only one project to go ahead, okay, this will be the decision rule. But if there are more than one project that can be taken as long as the the cap capital rationing allows, i.e. you got enough capital, then you can accept this and um, you can also accept this. The project that you'll reject is the one where NPV is negative. Now we know about this, uh, very quickly you may want to understand very quickly what is payback period. Um, now in case of payback period, uh, it's just the number of years it takes uh, want to recover the investment here um, it can be quickly computed you see now you invested 100 million and end of year one you're getting 80 which means now you've got 20 more to recover so basically i have just accumulated here and 20 will come out of the second year's uh, cash flow which is 80 so second year there will be surplus of 60 which you know. So therefore, what you can do is stop there and say, this is year one plus um, you have remaining 20. Okay, I've said ABS there just to change uh, a minus 20 into plus 20 divided by um, what is available from year two. So that gives you the ratio of what is remaining divided by what is available. So the answer for payback period therefore is 1.25. Of course, the answer here for payback period is going to be year one because you invested 50 million at the end of year one, you get 50. So therefore the payback period here uh, in the case of project C is just one year, okay? So that was on the payback period. And very quickly, if you want to understand on the accounting rate of return or sometimes also known as average rate of return, you basically need to follow the formula, which is uh, average annual return divided by investment. So uh, the formula, therefore, is this, average annual profit divided by initial investment. 
So here, average annual profit will be this 60 divided by 4. And then this, this will be divided by your investment amount, which is 100. Um, and uh, that's basically going to give you 15% as your accounting rate of return. But you see that uh, you, you may be attracted if you just see, oh, I'm going to get all my investment back within 1.25 years. So, so that's good. Uh, anything that I will receive after this point is only a surplus. So you may be attracted by the investment if you just see through the lens of payback period or the rate of return of a 15% can be a good one. However, we really need to make use of NPV to make a decision. Another method which um, the survey has been saying is the most popular among the CEOs or CFOs is internal rate of return. And uh, I'm going to explain in my next video why uh, NPV is much more superior than IRR. So uh, do not forget to see my next video. Uh, but thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for listening.